use of rapidly evolving mobile digital devices, cyber infrastructures, and democratization of access to information are all issues that are central to the archaeological process today. That's the contention outlined in a recent special issue on cyber archaeology of the American Schools of Oriental Research journal Near Eastern Archaeology, edited by UC San Diego anthropology and archaeology professor Thomas E. Levy. Cyber archaeology is the marriage of archaeology with computer science, engineering, and the natural sciences. And the underlying vision is actually quite bold, and it is to create a future for the past. So the question is, how do we go about it? Structural engineering professor Falco Kuster is the principal investigator on an NSF graduate student training program designed to encourage cultural heritage, science, and engineering. Nearly 35 PhD students from seven departments plus another 40 undergraduates have received funding over the past four years to work on teams in the field and in the lab. Some are archaeology students, but most come from other disciplines, and all of them are part of the Center of Interdisciplinary Science for Art, Architecture, and Archaeology, also directed by Kuster. So at one point or another, every single student will have touched the field of cyber archaeology and will have contributed to it in one way or another. Tom DeFonti, a distinguished professor of computer science and director of visualization and virtual reality in the Qualcomm Institute at UC San Diego, seized on cyber archaeology as a challenge in scientific visualization. Tom came to us with really rich photographic detail that we could map onto models. And then we started using photographic techniques, LIDAR techniques, and other things to create models that are eye-poppingly beautiful but also incredibly accurate. The cornerstone of 21st century cyber archaeology is an integrated model for the deployment of technologies at each phase of the process, starting with data acquisition. Data capture is really about being in the field and using digital technologies to record where data is located uh, in an archaeological site, and also to collect meaningful characterization data uh, about its mineralogical content and so on, and pulling it all together to tell the story of the past. Developing digital methods of data acquisition involved the deployment of GPS systems, laser scanners, balloons, unmanned aerial vehicles, and other tools such as ArcField, developed by UCSD researchers as a real-time GIS data recording system for archaeological excavations. Advanced digital data acquisition, however, produced an avalanche of field data that required further innovations to handle the next phase in the process, curation. We have to have new ways to curate that data, both from the field and when we bring it back to the laboratory. So we need to establish different kinds of cyber infrastructures to do that. And we've been doing that with the uh, Digital Archaeology Atlas of the Holy Land, which uh, georeference archaeological sites in space and time, and then we can add on any number of archaeological variables. Graduate students from UC San Diego's NSF-funded training program in cultural heritage produced two major innovations in curation and analysis. One is the web application called Archeostore, an integrated database solution to manage both digital and physical assets. Led by graduate student Aaron Gidding, the application also makes it easier to explore data while allowing new ways of researching archeological materials. The second innovation is OpenDig, which was developed by graduate student Matt Vincent as a framework for handling the metadata collected in the field, serving as the primary contextual information for the analysis and study of a sample or dig site. The fourth key component is dissemination, getting the story out to other academics and the public at large. This ranges from web-based archives and museum exhibitions to visualization and virtual reality systems that let viewers experience the sense of being there even from thousands of miles away.
Scientific visualization and 3D immersive virtual reality rooms have allowed UCSD researchers and collaborators to see their findings in brand new ways. Above all, archaeologists are now able to visualize their carefully curated data in three dimensions. We think in 3D. We don't really think in 2D. And now, with immersive 3D environments, we can take the archaeological data sets from an excavation and look at it as if we were there the day we discovered it and see the meaningful patterns, not only of one day of excavation, but of several months. Well, my field really is virtual reality and using virtual reality to communicate. We build room-sized displays that you walk into and walking into an archaeological space, of course, is ideal because they are typically room-sized or larger. And being able to walk up and look through things is exactly perfect for what we do. Indeed, dissemination of cyber archaeological information has been a driving force behind the development at UCSD's Qualcomm Institute of several generations of large-scale 2D and 3D visualization systems. All of the systems were demonstrated in 2013 in connection with an exhibition curated by UCSD's Levy, looking back at different models to explain environmental and other aspects of the biblical exodus. Transdisciplinary research is really team science, and we can no longer be working in our academic silos if we want to move into new areas of research and understanding in any field. I would say. Computer scientist DeFonti had the opportunity to participate in field expeditions in Saudi Arabia, Egypt, and excavation sites in southern Jordan of Tom Levy and his Jordanian research partner, Mohammed Najjar. So I traveled with Tom uh, to the Middle East and was inspired by his dig sites. Uh, also went on a side trip with some friends to Luxor and took pictures with our cave cam system, which pulls in 360 degree all the way around stereo images at extremely high resolution, like a half a gigapixel per eye. The CaveCam system is one of multiple technology systems developed in response to the digital needs of archaeologists in the field. Declining prices for surveying equipment, such as total stations, together with new technologies for aerial photography, including maneuverable rotary UAVs capable of carrying remote-controlled cameras, are making it much easier to capture detailed views of a site. Using structure from motion techniques also make it possible to develop 3D computer models of large areas based on the capture of overlapping high-resolution photographs. While not as precise as a laser model, the structure from motion model can portray much larger archaeological sites, including sites that would be too large for laser scanning. These new approaches are catching on with research institutions in the Middle East. Recent UCSD PhD archaeologist Neil Smith is now a research scientist with the King Abdullah University of Science and Technology, or KAUST. I, I believe that this could be used in every country in the Middle East. And really, like one of, one of our visions um, that uh, both Tom Levy and I have shared is the idea that uh, at every excavation site, you just have a copter sitting there and you just push a button and it takes off, scans the area every day. And uh, that's kind of um, our hope for this technology, that it'll become so commonplace that it'll be one of those tools in the archaeologist's toolbox that they can use for scanning um, their archaeological site, just as if you used your trowel or um, your total station as we use. Right now we're operating already across the world. Uh, this year alone our teams have been in Mexico and Guatemala in Saudi Arabia, in Israel, in Jordan, in Florence, Italy, uh, in uh, France, Greece. Uh. According to Falco Kuster, the goal is to develop a permanent institute at UC San Diego with satellite offices and field schools in various countries where UCSD and other students can become part of expeditions or even rapid deployment teams to respond to man-made or natural disasters that threaten damage to cultural heritage, sites, and artifacts. This will create a very unique way of analyzing uh, the actual uh, history uh, that sits behind an artifact, how it might have been created, how it has aged, what its current state of health is, but at the end of the day also 
will inform ways to preserve it for future generations. I work in Jordan and I try to um, give people uh, a new understanding of the richness of Jordan and uh, cyber archaeology helps. Cyber archaeology is a kind of um, objective tool. UCSD is one of those unique locations where this, there's a synergy happening today, right now, on, around this field of cyber archaeology. There's an excitement. I want to share it with uh, my colleagues. To do so, visitors are invited to explore the laboratories at Qualcomm Institute and meet the team for more in-depth experience and the next best thing to experiencing cyber archaeology in the field.